Hi, Periscopers. If you're joining us, thank you. Oh, I got the fuzzy head. <laughs> I can tell better on video. Hi, thank you for joining us, Impanastasia. Thank you for joining us, Crystal O'Shawn. Good to see you again. Let's see who else is going to join us today. It's nice to see you again. I'm actually on at 4.30 this time, not at a hours later. Hello, thank you for joining us, OG Fat. Uh, thank you for the hearts. Thank you for joining us, Ms. ARW. I've missed you. Ah, True Anglican, thank you for joining us. I appreciate it. Hi. Ah, Ray T. Blue, good to see you again. Thank you for joining me today. King 19 Z, thank you for joining us. E. Kobe, thank you for joining us. Hello from Newfoundland. I remember you, my Eastern Canadian. Thank you for the hearts. I appreciate the love. Uh, thank you for joining us, o Owen. <laughs> yeah, please also feel free to invite your followers. You can swipe left if you're on an iPhone or swipe from bottom to top if you're on an Android. Hi, ah, coming in from Houston. Thank you. Um, also, you know, you can also tweet this and note that we're live on Periscope with me if you'd like. I appreciate you joining us. Hello, uh, I think it's Malay Poppin. Ah, thank you for sharing on Twitter. I appreciate it. Ah, Mason901, thank you for joining us. Hi, from Barcelona. Oh, wow, Barcelona is really cool. Arnayo, thank you for joining us. What time is it in Barcelona? Ah, thank you for coming in. Thank you for the hearts. I really appreciate it. <laughs> thank you for thinking I'm 20. Bless you. <laughs> Um, uh, Hakan, thank you for joining us. I just want to acknowledge a couple more people. I'll get started. Well, I'll go ahead and get started. Ah, Madison Disby, thank you for joining us. Good to see you. Ah, thank you. A couple people joined MFK, and I missed a couple that came real fast. Thank you for joining in. Welcome back, Crystal. Um, I'll just start for a moment. You can all catch in the replay if you're a little late. Oh, I must be very late in Barcelona. Oh, I won't take up much of your time. Thank you. Um, my name is Monica A. Coleman, and I am a professor of religion. I'm based in Los Angeles, California, and I'm the author of the forthcoming book, Bipolar Faith, A Black Woman's Journey with Depression and Faith. And I come on for just a couple, hour, a couple minutes each um, weekday, Monday through Friday, to share answers to the questions that I get asked more than anything else. And the questions that I get asked the most are, what are my spiritual practices and what do I do to live faithfully with a depressive condition? So I wanted to share some of that. And today I was thinking about uh, self-definition. So that's the topic I put up there about what it means to have your own definition for yourself and how incredibly hard <laughs> that can be. Um, I think we live in a world where everybody wants to define you, um, tell you what you can do, what you, who you should be, put you in a box, have their own expectations of you, parents, teachers, friends, partners, lovers, right? Uh, thank you all for joining us. I really appreciate it. And, um, you know, and I think especially if you live with a depressive condition, when you first get that diagnosis, you're like, oh my gosh, you know, this is who I am. Like, I am bipolar or I am a person who has depression and it can feel like your whole identity, um, especially at the very beginning when you're just trying to figure out what that means and how to adjust to it and how to live with it. Um, it makes sense that that would feel like your whole identity. And for me, I actually have almost the opposite challenge and that is that when I feel like I'm in, when I'm in depressed mode, um, I don't feel well. I can't remember who I am. I lose who I am. Um, I'm like, who, who am I? Who is this Monica person who just runs around trying to get stuff done and can't get anything done? And um, so I want to talk about how important self-definition is. And of course, we our definitions of ourselves change. And it's not like we only have to have one definition. So yes, you're a child of God. If you're a faithful person, you might say that. Um, and yes, you live with bipolar. But I think one, it's important not to let a diagnosis or a label become your definition. For me, I think of it as something I live with, something, uh, but not who I am. 
And that's a big shift and a hard shift to make. And I write in my book, Bipolar Faith, a bit about how I make that shift um, from, oh my God, this is who I am. And this is the only thing about me that matters to this is one of my stories. This is part of who I am. Um, And labels can be helpful, I think, in terms of doctors and knowing what medications are helpful and what things are not helpful and knowing that you're not alone. But it can't be all of who you are. And so one I want to talk about, you know, kind of moving from this is something you live with or something you know about or something you experience to some to, between different between what that is and who you are, that you're bigger than your condition. You're bigger than your illness. You're bigger than your experiences. They're part of who you are, an important part of who you are. Um, but it's one of your stories, right? And I have to say, I got that from this wonderful essay in the anthology, Wild Women Don't Wear No Blues. And the author, oh, I forget the name of it. It's a wonderful essay in there. And she talks about her experience of rape. And she says, this is one of my stories. It's one of my angriest stories, but it's just one of my stories. And that was really meaningful for me to say, this is one of my stories. This is one of my experiences. Um, And then to think about how do we define ourselves? So once I know that this doesn't define me, and for me, that's a huge shift moving from something that happens to you, something you live with being the huge definer of your life to one of your stories. And that's one of the ways actually that I define forgiveness. When you're able to go from this totalizing event to this is part of me and just part of who I am and part of what I experience and know. Um, Another thing is how do you hold on to who you actually are? And I talk in Bipolar Faith about how I did that. I talked about, you know, when I lose myself, how do I hold on to a sense of self, a sense of who I am, of the things that are bigger than how depressed or sad or frustrated or anxious I may feel. Um, And one thing I'll share now, I can't tell it all because then you won't buy the book, right? Um, But one thing that I will share now that I did was, you know, I would try to, to really remind myself, right? And to think through, well, who am I? And I didn't try and define it in singular terms. I didn't say, okay, I am Monica, right? I am, that's my name. Um, Or I am someone's daughter. But I was okay with having multiple ways of thinking of who I am. I'm a daughter. I'm a sister. I'm a mother. I am now. It wasn't when I wrote the book, (laughs) when I I was the time period of the book. Um, You know, I'm a friend, right? These are really great positive parts of my identity. And they're relational, right? I don't know that I can know who I am outside of relationship with someone else, outside of relationship with other people, outside of relationship with the divine. So for me, knowing who I am is knowing who I am in relationship to God, who I am in relationship to other people, who I am in relationship to the earth, uh, who I am in relationship to my faith. And that's who I am, right? And that's different than what I live with and some of the things that I've experienced. Um, So I wanted to share that and also acknowledge that it's a hard thing to do. It is not easy to, particularly in the initial phases of diagnosis, to go from this is the name of what I have to this is not who I am. Uh, And it takes time and it's a process. And I write a lot about what that process was for me in my book, Bipolar Faith. Um, But I think it's a great place to be and a great place to aim for, to be able to define yourself for yourself, as uh, Ms. ARW says here, as Audre Lorde says, so that you're not crunched into other people's definitions of who you are. Um, And so for me, self-definition, it's a principle of Kwanzaa. If you're Kwanzaa celebrators, it's Kuji Chagulia, to define yourself for yourself instead of being named and defined and created by others. Um, it's a, it's a spiritual practice because you have to do it over and over again. And for me, it's a spiritual principle and it's a core part of my spirituality to know who I am in relationship to divine, to other people, to the earth. So I share that with you all and, um, I will hopefully try and come back in touch. A Monday's a holiday in the U S so I'll try for Monday. I make no promises. Otherwise I'll be back on Tuesday. Um, many blessings again. My name is Monica A. Coleman. I'm a professor of religion based in Los Angeles, California, and the author of the forthcoming book, Bipolar Faith, A Black Woman's Journey with Depression and Faith. So you can pre-order the book on Amazon. Just put in Bipolar Faith, Monica Coleman. You'll see it there. Um, And if you've enjoyed this, please share with other people on social media and use the hashtag Bipolar Faith.
many blessings.